Hello, Devin Rose here. Uh, February 22nd, palindrome day. And um, it's the evening. We're experiencing a bit of a, uh, a little storm, a little late winter storm. It's um, on the warm side. It's um, I think in the 30s, but it's raining, not snow. And it's got a fair amount of wind with it as well. Um, not worried, it's the pleasurable kind of wind from where I am on the docks because it's blowing me away from my finger dock and um, kind of having me bounce and, and pull off of my dock lines. So it's uh, got those big snubbers, so it's kind of uh, cushiony. But it is holding the boat at a bit of a, kind of a permanent list. It sort of gusts a little bit and it sort of blows me this way. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's a nice little stormy night to be, I feel safe. It's a nice little stormy night. <laughs> Good timing. Uh, it's a nice little stormy night to uh, get the fire going, get some coals going, get these stones warmed up. It's not terribly cold, so I don't know if I'll have to get up and stoke it tonight. I don't think so. And uh, and just stay cozy and rock, rock myself to bed in the fee berth. Earlier this month, um, I had a chance to actually go sailing. This time of year, there are um, better days and, and not as great days uh, weather-wise. We're expecting to get some snow this weekend, um, so the winter's by no means over. In fact, some of our strongest nor'easters happen in uh, in March. Um, and of course, there's the spring snows, which can be quite heavy and um, and here today, gone today. Um, so winter's not over yet. But tomorrow, it's supposed to be 60 degrees and sunny, so it's a good day to get some outside work done as well. In this episode, I hope to give you a little combination of a slice of life for living aboard and the simplicity of it, the deliberateness of it, and, and also give a little bit of the big picture about why it is that people live on board. And it's a little bit of a draw, a little bit of a push, but um, certainly it's resilient living. And in the face of climate change, kind of helps to be in a vehicle that can withstand a storm. My name is Evan. I live on a sailboat in the Gulf of Maine, even in winter. I'm an earth scientist, a policymaker, and planner for a turbulent future. I live efficiently, deliberately, and in beauty. There is so much that needs to change about how we live impactfully on this planet. This vlog guides us through that change, through science, story, and song. Maybe it's the test of a true sailor to set out in the middle of winter. Snow still covered the islands of the bay. We had no particular destination in mind. I suggested that we sail around the gong buoy at the outer edge of the bay. I thought I'd capture its haunting sound for a song I'm writing about fighting for climate justice against all odds. The air temperature is always about 10 degrees cooler on the water than on land. Beating back into Portland Harbor at sunset is a familiar sight to me. The captain of this boat, a 41-foot CNC, is a true sailor, the first woman captain in the Yarmouth Cup race to Nova Scotia. Maybe she let me sail as a sort of competency test. The good news is, I passed. And we were back by nightfall. E Dock, the dock where I stayed for the first part of the winter season, was damaged in the winter storms that were featured in episode one. The last of the boats from B Dock was moved to the more protected west side where I am now. 
These were my dock neighbors, and I watched over their Freedom sailboat since November when they left to spend the winter months on a sailboat in Sicily. They have a blog that documents their journeys called Surrender to the Abundance. My own abundance includes a small library. Mostly I have books on economics, history, and democracy. I also have selections from the Loeb Classics Library, Juvenal, Lucretius, Cicero, Stoic writer Seneca, and Marcus Aurelius, and this book, attributed to Aristotle, but possibly written by Theophrastus or another of Aristotle's students, Oikonomica. Oikonomica is home economics, how to manage a household within a society. That's distinct from crematistics, which is the accumulation of money and wealth, which Aristotle saw as dehumanizing and unnatural. I don't even know if home economics is taught anymore in schools. I took it, and I think most people in my generation took uh, sewing and cooking and uh, wood shop and metal shop. Uh, I think that was a real common curriculum for, uh, for Gen Xers in uh, junior high, when they still called it junior high. There's much more to home economics than, than those things and just skills. So part of what I want to do with these, with these videos, with these vlogs, is share some of the wisdom of this home economics that's made potent in onboard living. You have to live efficiently. You have to be able to account for everything. You have to account for every little twist tie that you find needs to have a place. So there's a certain hyper awareness of consumption uh, living under these circumstances. So some of this I think is very exportable and very meaningful in developing the resilience that we'll need as we face the ongoing crises that will mark our next couple of decades. I try and eat very um, efficiently, you know, healthfully. So I learned that collard greens are much richer in certain nutrients than other of the so-called super greens. I learned to like collard greens for this reason. Cruciferous vegetables like collard greens and broccoli all keep well in an ice box. I grab about six leaves, which is kind of a lot, and chop them into one inch strips. I cut the stems about a half inch. And place it all in a steamer, stems first. I get fish from a well-known fish market, Harbor Fish, which is right next door on the rustic and scenic Portland waterfront. A wide variety of fresh fish is for sale at a range of prices. I buy whatever white fish is in the $7 per pound price range, haddock, pollock, cod, or hake. As a young man, I was a river guide for two week long trips in the Grand Canyon. I learned some techniques from the excellent cooks on those trips. Place the middle knuckle of your index finger against the flat of the knife blade and slide the produce into the blade, being careful not to lift the blade too high. You can slice very thinly, very fast, with a lot of control. Twist of lemon and a sprinkling of seasoned breadcrumbs finishes it off. I have a Swedish made alcohol burning oven and stove, which is common for sailboats. 
Alcohol is smokeless, non-explosive, and easy to handle if it spills. These canisters contain a sponge that serves as a reservoir. Controllable oven temperatures can go as high as 550 degrees Fahrenheit. Water from my dehumidifier provides steam for the collard greens and rice on the wood stove. Once that's done, after about 15 minutes, I heat up my little fry pan and melt butter or oil and saute garlic. It takes just a few minutes. Wow, a lot of food. But uh, turns out I have about one big meal a day, and uh, not because of any particular dietary needs or religious uh, requirements. I just uh, I just uh, find I'm maybe lazy during the day and don't eat much, or I, I am busy. Maybe not lazy. I'm busy during the day and I don't find time for lunch. Uh, that's okay. Intermittent fasting is healthy, I guess. So that's it. Just put some garlic on the on the greens. And uh, got my fish, fish and, uh, and collard greens, and the rice is nicely cooked from water that was recovered from my, um, my dehumidifier. And it's all cooked on the wood stove uh, and in the oven. Bon appetit. absolutely crucial to have a good dehumidifier on the boat in winter, as condensation can be a real issue, causing mold to grow and sheets and clothes to get wet. You could dump the water it collects, or you could use it for cooking and cleaning. It's pretty much distilled water from vapor in the cabin. The only concern is cleanliness of the reservoir. I rinse it out with denatured alcohol from time to time, I save the paper towels in a sealed container and use them to light fires in my wood stove. I'm not really concerned about the methanol toxicity of denatured alcohol, which is mostly ethanol. But if this is a concern, rum works too. It's well known that we are in a housing crisis in this country. I highly recommend this episode of a podcast on macroeconomics called Macro and Cheese to get a good sense for how housing has changed over the preceding generations. What this means for an increasing number of Americans is that the American dream simply isn't a thing. Many sailing videos and vlogs sidestep this issue and make it all about fun and adventure, about surrendering to the abundance, as it were. But whether it's a push or a pull, sailboat living offers a way to live a dignified and comfortable life with very little impact in the world. Some may consider that the choice to simplify by living in a tiny home or a sailboat is a radical rejection of consumerist culture. They may not appreciate that most of the world's population has no choice but to live simply and modestly and be grateful to have a safe place to shelter from the storm. episodes I'll go into a deeper dive into the sources of what I consume broccoli collard greens fish 
um, lemon tea, denatured alcohol, and the fate of what I discard. Plastic bags, recyclables, non-recyclables. It's a sad fact of our consumer society that such connection, such a knowledge of where things come from and where they go is mostly deliberately hidden from us. I would expect that if we knew the ethical pedigree of all we consume, our habits would change if we strive to be ethical people, but maybe not. We do live in the information age after all, and perhaps we could do more to learn about where our things come from and where they go. But it's a daunting task for busy people living busy workday lives. But living small, living simply, and living deliberately is a good start. Hope to see you again next time. Thanks for joining me.